Today we're working on our shed ramp using scraps. That's pretty cool. So this ramp is almost free. With concrete cure times, that could be a disaster. It's gonna be like the self-leveling concrete where you're like, five minutes go, go, go. <laughs> We take our DIY skills to the next level. The professional way to do it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Hey, we're turning into real pros here. We managed to create a finished ramp. So the ramp is working, it's installed, we can get the yard max in, we can probably get the lawnmower in. It's all part of Building Modern. Good morning. Good morning. Today is another day on the shed build. Yep, yesterday we finished up the small roof, which was the final bit of the main portion of our shed. Uh, so we were excited to have that done. It looks really good. And then we realized today we have an extra day. Yep. Before we get into busy season, we have a little bit more time. So we thought we would work on the ramp up into the shed. So that's what we're doing today. We're working on the ramp. Uh, so the ramp is what's going to allow us to obviously put anything on wheels up in there. So like the yard max, which is our main goal of even building the shed, is getting a place to put our yard max. So putting the yard max up there is going to be great. Uh, lawn mowers, anything like that. Yep. Uh, the only problem we have with this ramp is that it's on a hill. Uh, so it's at a slope, it's about an eight inch difference, which means we'll have to dig into the dirt and then uh, we'll have to fill in and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and when we say a, a slope, it's from side to side, not forward to backwards. Right, yeah. well, it's kind of both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then so this opening back behind me is the opening for the shed, the door, scooch to the side a little bit, there it is. Uh, and that's around seven feet. And so what we're gonna do, instead of doing ramp and some steps, we're gonna do the ramp across the whole thing because I think that'll just look better. Right, uh, so it is a lot to do, so we better get started. All right. Okay, so because this hill is quite the slope, we need to dig down into the hill to get the correct level so that the ramp is actually level going across. Otherwise, it's a whole bag of worms. So what we're doing here, uh, we have our Hooper laser and the laser level attachment thing that you can buy for it. And uh, we have this so that we can get level. So here I have this. It's going back and forth between it. It's really sensitive. So I'm gonna call that as level here. Uh, so then anywhere else I go, like if I go here, you know, I can see it's too low because I'm down the hill. And then when I go up the hill, I could see, now this one I can, right now it's the morning, I can still see the laser. And the laser is hitting right about four and three quarters, and I need it to hit right at about seven. So I still have a ways to go. Two more inches dig, to dig down, but that lets me know how far to dig down to get level. Um, and, oh, I'll link this stuff in the description uh, in case you're interested in this. We've been very happy with it. Uh, I can see the laser. Right now it's a green laser. I can see it, and it's about 11 a.m. Uh, so that's doing pretty well. I am in the shade though. Uh, but even if I couldn't see the line, this thing could with the laser level. And that's why we're using it. Oh, hey. Well, wow, you're here with me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd say. In our area, I don't know if you watched our earlier videos or not. In our area, we use a pickaxe to dig and not a shovel. A shovel here is really just for moving dirt. If you want to actually dig, you use a pickaxe. Our soil is a little bit too compact and a little bit too hard. Uh, to use a shovel. And I have a ton of roots. The pickaxe goes straight through roots, whereas the shovel will sometimes get stuck on them. Okay, so now that the hole is dug, I need to tamp it down with this tamper. Uh, this is a not so heavy tamper. It's not too bad. Uh, but I tamped down the dirt so that way it's more compact. It was already pretty compact. So I'm really just tamping down what I loosened up. Well, and you were using that flat shovel, which helps make the hole flat too. Right. Um, it turns out I'm not good at keeping level. Uh, so what we have here is basically everything now is below the point that we're starting at. Uh, and the reason for that is that we want to fill up uh, with concrete up to where will have uh, the supports, uh, the actual beams coming down. Uh, we've seen this method at uh, Perkin Berlin Brothers. They do this for pretty much every single set of stairs they have, and they don't seem to have issues with it, so that's what we're gonna do. I realized that putting the PT ground contact, those pressure treated ground contact boards in contact with cement and in contact with the dirt is gonna shorten the life of the ramp overall. However, 
honestly, it's going to be a difference of what, 10 to 15 years? It's going to last at least 10 years, if not longer. We should be fine. All right, so I am trimming out all of these roots out of our hole here. Uh, we just don't want any organic matter in there with the concrete. And I am using my crummy uh, pruners. So I wouldn't be doing this with my nice set of pruners I'd use on trees. These, are, these pruners have been demoted to uh, roots and groundwork. Hey, we were figuring out our slope for our ramp. And the way we did that was determine our rise over run. So our rise is 18 and a half inches on the high side, which means that should be the whole way across because we've now leveled it. And then our run is uh, 36.5 inches, which gives us a pitch of 6.082 in 12. So I'm just gonna go with the six and 12 pitch. I'm calling it easy. I'm going with six and 12. It's gonna be, there's no way I'm not gonna hit that. So I have this set up to six and 12. Right there, which is very convenient to have that just on the saw, super nice. All right, so I'm gonna use the scrap piece of lumber that we have here, and I'm just gonna cut our six and 12, and we're gonna go see how it looks. Does it fit? Yes. So here's the thing, so now it's high, which is what we want. So over here, mm -hmm. it's high by, I don't know, half an inch. And where we measured it for the six and 12, is down here, which allows for our two by uh, material to come in here. I don't know if we've said this before, we're using a two by 10 pressure treated for our deck boards because that's what we have. So that's what we're using. So anyway, it's high, which means when we go take off the bottom, it'll go lower, which is exactly what we need. Yeah, it'll drop down some more. Yeah. Okay. Let's go do it. All right. Hopefully that works. We'll go see. All right, let's see if this works. All right, that's exactly, I think, right around where we wanted it to land. Yeah, I just um, gotta dig more holes. We just have to dig more out right here. Okay, so I'll mark out the 16 on center. I'm gonna dig the trenches where those are while I'm doing that, and it's gonna go down, and she's gonna cut all the other boards to size. Yep. Right? Yep. That's the game plan. Using that one as a template. Using the first one as a template. Yep. All right. And then uh, over here on this right side, we might do extra ones. I might do two extra ones just in case, at least digging out wise, so that uh, that's where the yard max is going to go up and down and it's extra heavy. Yeah, and we have jo extra joists doubled up in here too. So we have like, here's some joists three in a row that are like super close to each other. You can see where the nails are. All right, let's get to it. All right. Okay guys, so I finished uh, making the dirt ready as much as I could. I have it dug out to what I think is right. I need to have some templates to put in there to make sure it fits correctly. But in the meantime, here's Anna cutting some material. Are you, you're happy about this, that it's working? Yeah, it's, although it's hard moving around pressure treated material, it's heavy. Heavy and not straight. And not straight, yeah. All right, and what your cut's gonna look like? There you go, here and here. I see. And I did this so I could already cut the ends. If I just cut through here, then they wouldn't be the right length. So I'm giving myself some space, way more than the blade's width, but just yeah, just extra. Cause I think that's great. So I could go ahead and cut the ends. You're doing great. I mean, honestly, honestly, Hannah is doing so much better than I would ever do doing this. Uh, you're more the perfectionist. Here, Why is you're, that? you're more of a perfectionist and I'm more of like the 80 percenter, well, maybe you, 90. You know about like not, you, you the blades width, the eighth of an inch would have messed you up. I know, but I'm hot right now, so I don't think I would have. <laughs> you're okay, you're like, I'm hot, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Chase it. Gotta...
All right, so now that I have all of my pieces cut, both ends at the correct angles, I am now going to cut out this notch right here. And I need this notch for it to land on my ledger board right here, which are two by fours. Everything pressure treated, ground contact. So this is my template and I'm going to cut it out with a jigsaw and then I will use this to trace the same shape onto all of these other guys. All right, that looks all right, but I don't really want to be doing that for the whole other cut. But I guess I'm going to have to. This is going to take a while. I think what I'm going to do is try to go over to the miter saw and cut the majority of this line with the miter saw and then maybe finish it up with the jigsaw because I think this is just take forever on the jigsaw. This pressure treated wood is super dense. And there we are. So this is a, just a piece of wire mesh we had. Anyway, this is all we have to reinforce our concrete. Uh, we could scrounge around and see if we have anything else. I'll go scrounge around for a few other things while you do this, okay? Just sort of random bars and things in here. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, hey, look. So we're copying this idea of putting the concrete in here after uh, Perkins, like you put it down and then you put concrete, like Perkins yeah. Builders Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Perkins Building Brothers. Builder Brothers. Builder Brothers. Yeah. Okay, so they, <laughs> they, them, those they <laughs> put a whole bunch of junk in there. I know. They were like, let's fill it up with junk and like extra rebar and old stuff. And, so know. I can fill it up with a whole bunch of junk and extra rebar and stuff. I don't know if we have extra rebar, but I got extra pieces of metal. The professional way to do it. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Hey, we're turning into real pros here. All right. Okay. We get to it. Oh, and I brought up the concrete. Oh, okay. See, oh, here. Did here. you just dump it over there? I brought there? up the concrete. Yes, I just dumped it right there. We got to fill it up right here. We got to put our concrete tray. Mm -hmm. Premix it. The red stuff does say to premix it. It just sets up way faster. Okay. So it's going to be like the self leveling concrete where you're like, five minutes on go, go, <laughs> Okay. All right. We, not that we ever had that experience. Oh, of course not. Oh, no. We never had never. it set up on us and then suddenly had a concrete pile on our floor. Oh, no. Instead of leveling anything. Never happened. <laughs> Last house doesn't count. This really is like all these scrap pieces from the shed, which is amazing. So all of these two by sixes are the cutoff pieces from the other pieces up here all over the shed. So like we didn't have to buy any additional material for this ramp, which is super exciting. At least the framing part, uh, the framing, the two by six, all the two by sixes and these two by fours were left over. Uh, we had some PT two by fours, PT two by sixes ground contact. That's pretty cool. So this ramp is almost free. Uh, Concrete, um, we had left over from another project. Five bags are just sitting there taking up space in our garage. Um, and the floorboards that we'll be using, the two by tens, those are boards that we got on super crazy clearance sales. So we already had those. So we're not buying anything additional. Although those aren't what you would normally use for this project, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to tracing of this bird's mouth type dealie. Oh, and when I'm doing this, I am trying to line up the top edge of my boards just to make sure it's nice and square when I go to transfer this line. And I'm squaring up the top edge because that's the edge that actually matters more so than this bottom edge. Okay. You're gonna be like, I'm, look, I'm sitting in your way. Uh, no, I want to say here one more to go. Wait, this is super pointy. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Why are you right here? Hey. <laughs> this is a I found these. Safe. These were for a little for sale signs for the last time we sold our house. Uh, I don't think we need them anymore, and so I'm going to use them, and I'm going to cut them in half here. So I found my my nail guys, right? Nibblers. Uh huh. And Nibblers. Then you, you just go there, like that. Mm -hmm. Normally you use two hands, but you know I'm sitting here. Okay. And then you go. It's like the most awkward. Do you need like, a hand? <laughs> do you want me to hold on to the rest of this? Yeah. Ready? All right. Um, yeah. Teamwork. Yeah. And then what we can do is we can put that down in the ground or and just, it gives some support. I guess so. Or just lay it sideways into the concrete. Well, if you do it enough times, then the concrete won't go sliding down the hill.
one. Seven done. Uh, with the other template, that makes eight that we will have. And then we get to do concrete. I think it's next after that. I don't think there's anything else. So yeah, that's it. Okay. I am putting this pressure treated paint stuff on the cut ends of our pressure treated wood. What's it called? Cutting uh, stuff? Cutting stuff. Uh, cut and treat. Is it cut and treat? Yeah, it's cut and treat. There is only one of you, only one of me. There's a million of those who won't let us be. But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt. I've been scared to live cause some people never learn. But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. It's a new beginnings in a bed. Okay, so we have the first half done, uh, it's in. And so uh, the next thing we need to do is the second half, I need to dig out a little bit more dirt and we added in uh, one support. So I need to add in more digging. So that's what we're doing. And it's going ahead and starting some screws as well. So it's easier for us to install once we have it in place. Okay, holes are dug out. Now we got to buzz off a few roots and then we're good to go. Well, how are you feeling about this ramp so far? Uh, it's about the same amount of work as I thought it would be. Oh, it's a lot more work than uh, I, I was hoping it wouldn't be too much work, but it's it's a fair amount. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's update everybody on what's going on. So all right, we've done all the wood part of the ramp, and next is the concrete part. Yes. Yeah, so uh, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What are they called? Supports. They're kind of joists, sort of. They're ramp. Eight pieces joists. of wood going from the shed down to the ground. Yeah. And they're all hovering a few inches off the ground, and that's on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got that set. We have them set on a cleat system, uh, which is a piece of two by four pressure treated that they're sitting on, and that's, that's screwed into the wall. So hopefully that gives it some structural support. They're also screwed in from the other side and screwed in from the other side. Screws everywhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are. They well, we them. also, and to keep them in line with each other, we put a temporary two by four across the whole thing to make them all in line with each other. Right. So that way, when we pour the concrete under them, some aren't shifted in a weird way. They'll be shifted together. Right. Ideally, it's just at least a straight line. I don't care if they're level. I just want them straight. Yeah. So next up is concrete. Uh, so what we have right now is we have quickcrete fast setting concrete, which on the bag doesn't say how quickly it sets. It's just like floor leveler for your house. Yeah, so that we've done, had this problem before with floor level, self-leveling concrete for floors on the interior. Uh, it just says fast setting. It doesn't say how fast. It means very rapid. Yeah, pro tip. <laughs> like ultra rapid. Pro tip, when they say fast setting for that stuff, that's like two to five minutes and it's, it's starting to set up. Yeah. This stuff says it's completely cured in 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the temperature. That's super fast. So they said in extremely hot weather, add ice cubes. And an and we've done that before for cement. Yeah, we have. And in extremely cold weather, uh, add hot water. So we're kind of in the middle of the road here. It's probably, what, 80 degrees right now? 85? Yeah, probably 80. So like, it's probably towards 80. the warmer temperature. So I'm going to do this in multiple batches. We have five bags total. We just need it to go up to the bottom of these pieces of wood. That's so right. So it doesn't need to fill And the So the idea here, and let's talk about the idea. So this came from Perkin Builders Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, which we like their channel. We watch them a lot. The thing that we like a lot, uh, they did it where they do stairs this way, where they set the stairs, they put it in place, they put like a piece of board to hold it in place, and then they just fill the concrete up to the bottom. Genius. <laughs> and then it just cures. I like it. And then there you go. You don't have to, you don't have to figure out, oh, well, this math and all this stuff. You just set it up how you want it, mm -hmm. dig a hole, 
fill the hole with concrete, and it cures. And it's touching the bottom of your boards, and touching then the bottom of your boards. It's, it's great. I like. That's it. honestly great. Uh, it's for that's definitely the only place I've seen anybody doing that. So we're going to do that because if it works for real builders, mm -hmm. it should work well enough for us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, do you need more water? Not yet. Ready, one, two. Okay, two bags are done. We have three bags to go. This looks about right. <laughs> so this is about right consistency for uh, how wet the concrete mix needs to be. For what we want. For our purposes, we want it to flow a little bit so we can pour it in there. Where we'll go right here. Ready? Well, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, when we said it's go, 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 I mean, it's go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, so the first batch that we put down, it's already started to set up and it's ready to go. The second batch, I can see it right now is setting up. Well, and, and the second and third batch, those were more liquidy than the first. Yeah, you said to make it more liquidy, so I made it more liquidy. Yeah, it needed to flow in there a lot better. Surprisingly, the five bags were enough. It was like perfect. I really didn't think it was going to be enough. Um, Surprise. So that's, <laughs> that's it. So now what Happy we got to do is uh, either... We got to just make sure that we can get to these screws for tomorrow mm -hmm. to take them off. Yep. Um, but that's it for tonight. I mean, we, we got to let it cure. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow we'll put on the boards for this ramp and then we'll have officially a ramp. That's exciting. Shouldn't take long. And then the shed is done. Good morning. It's another day. So yesterday we finished the concrete. It is cured now. So now it's time to install the top boards for our ramp. Um, the boards that we're going to be using are 2x10 pressure treated ground contact boards. Um, they're 2x10x10, by 10 by 10. we'll have to cut them down. Uh, the first one will actually have to rip the top so that it fits nicely up against the shed. We're going to rip uh, just the top edge to 6 and 12 or 23 and a half degree pitch. That way it'll fit nice and snugly uh, and uh, it should look really good. Uh, so that's it. That's the first one you don't have to do. The rest of them we don't have to do it to. We just have to install them and it's done. I'm glad we only have to do that once. Well, that's quite heavy. You want to go see if it fits? Yeah, let's go see if it fits. Aha! Look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty good.
We have a ramp. Yeah. <laughs> so this looks, okay, it feels extremely solid. Oh yeah, there's so many screws in this thing, it's ridiculous. <laughs> So I don't think this is going anywhere. I think the yard max can make it up, but we have to do that test before uh, before we call it. What test? Putting the, try getting the yard max up here. Oh. Will it will it go? Oh, okay. Okay, everybody. So test was successful. The yard max made it into the shed. Without, been aggressively. <laughs> been aggressive, but it didn't have any major issues. Um, this is, a, I mean, six and 12, that is a bit of a slope. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have to put some sort of like, uh, like grippy paint, sandy yeah. paint on here. Maybe uh, we just get some paint and throw some sand in it. Uh, so the ramp is working. It's installed. We can get the yard max in. We can probably get the lawnmower in. Yeah. And this is super, super solid feeling. Like yeah. it's full of screws. It's not I mean, going anywhere. Yeah. It feels extremely solid. So this is great. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. It really does make a difference. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Yeah, that's fun.